Hey, how's it going? This is Joe and Tell. I've been meaning to make a video about frequency response charts and how to read them. And so I was looking around to see if anybody had done it. So if somebody did, then I wouldn't even bother. And I came across this video from Andrew Robinson talking about specs and whether they matter. And in his opinion, it seems like he believes that specs don't really matter so much. It's more about what your perception is and whether you enjoy the speakers. I'm gonna have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. And I'm here to tell you the top 10 reasons why he's absolutely wrong and why he has the most punchable face in audio. No, I'm just playing. He's a fellow YouTuber, online reviewer of audio products. And so he has his opinion. And the one thing that I would like to say is, you know, I know that these discussions get heated and it's a hot topic. That's partially the reason why I'm doing this video as well. But it doesn't have to be so nasty, right? I mean, we can disagree and that's the one thing we try to do at Daily Hi-Fi is let people know like, it's okay to disagree and have your own opinion, but you don't have to be nasty about it. So in my opinion, measurements 100% do matter because it tells you what the speaker's doing. It tells you what your room is doing to the sound. It tells you what your hearing is like if you have hearing loss. And it can also tell you what your hearing, your listening preferences are based on certain trends. So in other words, measurements are just a point of reference. It's like saying, you know, do you like this uh, laptop? Yes, okay, why? Well, it's the right size for my hands. Okay, well, what's the width? Because we have different size hands. Well, I don't know, it's just right for me. Well, a point of reference would be nice if there was a way to measure the size of the keyboard, then you would be able to figure it out and see, yeah, yeah that's about right for me right? So that's the point of the measurements, in my opinion. So yeah, it gets real crazy when it comes to measurements. Some people like my buddy Aaron at Aaron's Audio Corner, he has a whole clipple machine that's meant to really measure the speaker. And it's valuable to me because not only does it tell me what the speaker's doing, which is very important, it can also give you an idea once you know what the speaker's doing, what your room is doing to change the sound of the speaker. And then if you were to take some tests to you know, understand what your hearing's like, if you have high frequency hearing loss, things like that, then that gives you another data point, right? And finally, if you're a consumer and you see a trend and you know you like certain speakers that maybe have this type of frequency response, then that gives you a better idea of what you might wanna look for in the future. It might not tell you exactly, but it kind of gives you an idea. So my wife asked me, can measurements tell you whether a speaker is good? And also, what is a good speaker? And you know, to me, that's pretty simple. And that is that a speaker is not supposed to introduce its own sound meaning the sound that's going into the speaker should be the sound that's coming out of that. And there's a way to test that, and that's a frequency response measurement. Now this makes perfect sense because if you think about it, let's say if you record somebody playing an instrument, right? You want that speaker to play that instrument as realistically as possible. Once you get to a certain point and you really start distorting the sound and an instrument doesn't sound like an instrument and a human voice doesn't sound like a human voice, it gets to the point where you're like, okay, we can all agree this is a bad speaker. It doesn't sound realistic, right? Um, it's just that when you're trying to figure out what's the best speaker, then it starts to get tricky because those other things that we we're talking about with the room, your hearing preferences, your hearing abilities, those do play a role in the overall perception. So that's why you hear a lot of people talking about psychoacoustics. It's not just acoustics by itself, which is the study of sound. We're talking about the perception of sound. Now back to that frequency response, what that is actually showing you is it's showing you how the speaker is affecting the sound. So a perfectly flat speaker means that whatever's coming in, it's going out, it's not changing the sound whatsoever. That's considered a neutral speaker. Now, if you see it bumped up in the bass region or bumped up in the treble region, that's how that speaker is actually affecting the overall sound signature. So what's interesting about this is there are companies like Harman and PSB where they've done lots of research in this category and they've found that there is actually a correlation between what is measurable and what people like. And so that's a great thing. And what they found in their research is that people generally like a speaker that is neutral, that is well behaved on axis in the listening window and also performs well in room, but that's for another topic where we're talking about the off-axis response and early reflections and all that. But that's just to say that a well-behaved speaker that is also flat approximately on axis within the listening window. And that makes perfect sense. You want a speaker that's accurate because once you start deviating from what's accurate, then you start talking about what I would consider a distortion. When we're talking about a flat speaker, we're not talking about a speaker that's performing flat at your listening position because 
If that were the case, most people would think that that doesn't sound right because you expect the room to add some bass, different things like that. We're talking about a speaker that measures flat anechoically. And so there's a very big difference. You want a well-behaved speaker, but how it performs in your room is a different story. So to me, a measurement is not about telling you what speaker is good, what you should like, things like that. It gives you an idea of why you like a speaker, right? You start seeing trends as to, oh, I like speakers that perform this way. Or it'll help you figure out what your room is doing, right? So a measurement will help you in that manner. And so it's very useful in those cases. You know, I wouldn't just throw out measurements and say, you know, measurements are completely useless because in all aspects of our life, we rely on technology that relies on measurements and accuracy. I mean, measurements are all about just objective data, about facts. So here are some things that measurements can tell you. A frequency response measurement can't tell you everything. So an anechoic measurement is not gonna tell you what that speaker is gonna do in your room because it was in an anechoic chamber but it'll still give you an idea of how that might perform in your room because it's a consistent, repeatable measurement. So that's why Aaron invested in such an expensive machine is because that machine will give you anechoic data without having an anechoic chamber. Measurements can't tell you everything, especially if you're not using the right measurements to deduce the right information. So there are certain measurements for certain things, and there's many different things that you can actually measure. But uh, any measurement is not going to tell you whether you're going to like a speaker because of the way it looks or you might like a speaker brand and you're you prefer that. And that's all that's all OK. You know, those are all things that might add to a bias about a speaker. And I, it affects me as well. A lot of times I'll get a beautiful speaker in and I have to think to myself, all right, this is a nice looking speaker. Make sure to try your best to not let that affect you because it does. And that's okay. That part is okay. If you have preferences because you like the way something looks, well, you're the one who has to deal with it, right? It's going to be in your living room. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to be happy with the way that speaker looks in your living room, right? And I would agree with what Andrew Robinson says is at the end of the day, you do have to be the one who's happy with your speaker. But my argument is just that Measurements will help you get an idea of why you like that particular speaker. So again, I want to restate my point. To make it clear, I know the comments are going to go crazy, but my point is that measurements can tell you why you like what you like. If you do the right measurements, there are many out there, it'll give you an idea of why you like what you like. So maybe you can find another speaker that is also similar to what you like. And so that's really it. It's not that a perfectly measuring speaker will be the one that you like. Even in the research from Sean Olive and Floyd Tool, it wasn't 100%, right? It's not like 100% of the people like the speaker, you know, hands down. No, there's going to be some people who like a speaker that has extra bass, right? And this is the thing that I'm trying to tell you guys is that, you know, I have an idea what what other reviewers like. You know, if, I, if I've reviewed the same speaker, I've measured them, or I have a measurement of them, then I can kind of get an idea like, you know what, I think this reviewer here, I think he likes bright speakers. Or this guy, he likes bass. You know, or this guy, he likes ones that's like a more v shape right? And so if I can see the trend, believe me, others can. I mean, I've even had companies reach out to me and say, hey, you know, uh, we like your videos and we want to send you these speakers. We know that you like speakers that are a little bit more bass heavy and these aren't, so I'm not sure if you're going to like them. So believe me. When it comes to business, these guys are not playing around. They know. They know what I like, and that is true. I do like speakers with a little bit more bass. That's a personal preference. And so, but I know that because, because of measurements. So for the rest of the reviewers out there, I would just say that if measurements don't matter, right, if they don't matter at all, if specs don't matter at all, which is not what I think that they're saying, or I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody's saying that completely, that they don't matter, but they just don't matter that much to them. I would just say this is if it's only objective and if all speakers are different, all rooms are different, you know, and those are things that are going to greatly affect the overall sound. And if our preferences are all different, then what's the purpose of watching your review, right? Because if your review is completely just subjective and based on your opinion and mine are completely different and my experience is going to be completely different, then what are, what's the purpose of watching that, right? Uh, maybe just for entertainment to see somebody else enjoy the speaker, maybe, 
But um, I don't think that's the case. I believe that if we were to review 100 speakers, I think we would start coming to the same conclusions. We would start converging on the same same ideas that, you know what, these speakers are better than these. These are not so good. And I think that you'd see a, a correlation. And I think that at the end of the day, once you get all the best of the best of the best at the top, you'll find that those speakers are probably more likely to measure flat than the ones that we've said are no good. That's just my opinion. So anyway, I think my point being not just that measurements matter, but that you don't have to be nasty about it, right? It's okay to disagree. It's okay to have different opinions. We're just talking about audio. We're having fun. This is a fun hobby. So let's just keep it on the up and up. I know everybody wants to be the know-it-all, the guy who knows the most. Well, I'll be the guy that knows the least, all right? If I'm wrong, tell me in the comments. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Take care. Bye-bye.